What is a pre-foreclosure? That's what we're talking about today. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met yet, I'm Sphere Popolevsky with Supreme Home Sales. And today we're answering a kind of sensitive question, which is what is a pre-foreclosure? A pre-foreclosure is the status that it takes from the time that you have not made any mortgage payment to the time that the bank is filing what is called a list pendant. Litigation is pending. It will usually take three missed monthly payments that you're not making to the mortgage company before they actually get their attorneys to file the list pendants in the county clerk's office. And then unfortunately that becomes public knowledge. In the state of New York, it's been common that after the list pendants had been filed with the county clerk's office, the foreclosure process takes a while. In other states like New Jersey, for example, uh, things are happening a lot quicker and the danger of actually getting the property to be foreclosed on are a lot riskier and can happen much faster than it would in the state of New York. During this process, you would be getting a lot of mail and a lot of phone calls probably from your bank demanding a payment, making threats to you and stuff like that. The worst thing you can really do is ignore the situation and think that it's gonna go away. I highly recommend that you don't do that. The main goal is for you to understand that there's options for you. Some of the options may not be the ones that you're very excited about, but it's good to have options. I highly recommend that we go over all the options that are available to you. And once you know what the positives and negatives are in every option, that will give you power to make an intelligent decision as to what works best for you and your family. And options are better than a foreclosure at some point down the road when there's nothing you can do at that point. One option that many homeowners revert to is loan modification. And loan modification might be a good idea. It's not for everyone. However, you would need to qualify for a loan modification. So you'll have to file for it, fill in applications, submit paperwork, prove hardship, and then the bank will review, the loss mitigation department will review, and they either approve you or decline. Based on the knowledge that I have with experience that I have along with other experienced people who are handling these kind of uh, situations, all tell me that the percentage of Loan modification approvals are very slim compared to the amount of applications and homeowners that are applying for those kind of things. So absolutely give it a try. Make sure that you get everything in writing. Make sure if you make any kind of an arrangement with your mortgage company that you uh, do get it in writing. Because if you don't, unfortunately, there's not going to be a way you're going to prove anything that they promised you or agreed to. So that's that's really important to make sure that you document everything and have them write it to you in a written form. Obviously. The other option that are available, and I don't recommend you do that at all, but banks will push you and offer you a deed in lieu. A deed in lieu of foreclosure. You don't wanna do that because a deed in lieu and foreclosure is just another word for foreclosure and basically the only one who benefits from a deed in lieu is the bank itself because what that means really is that you hand them the keys and hand them the title without them actually going through the complete foreclosure process and therefore you're still going to have the same kind of record on your credit report and even a judgment for the difference between what you owe to the bank versus what they're going to end up selling the property for. So absolutely do not give them an agreement to a deed in lieu of foreclosure. That is really, really bad. Another option that's available to you is bankruptcy. 
I am not an attorney. I cannot give you any advice on bankruptcy. But if you are considering something like this, speaking to an, a bankruptcy attorney, somebody who's very competent is uh, another option that you have. So entertain that options with an attorney. Another option that's available to you is a short sale. Now, a short sale basically means that you owe to the mortgage company a lot more money or more money than what you can sell the property for. And therefore, even if you would have sold the property, you still cannot settle the loan completely. So for that reason, we will apply for a short sale, which will be somewhat like applying for a loan modification, but since you're no longer staying in the property and the bank is not continuing having you as a risk, they're going to entertain that a little bit differently. So in that case, there would be another short sale package that we would fill in. The property would have to be sold at the highest possible sale price that the current market conditions will allow and the bank will have to approve the price of the short sale as well as approve you as the homeowner. So you really have to have a hardship and you have to prove to them that you can't afford to pay the mortgage. The way I like to explain it is think of it this way. When you apply to a mortgage, you had to submit supporting documents showing the bank that you can absolutely afford to pay the mortgage and one of them to give you the loan. So think of it in reverse now. Now we have to do a whole application with supporting documents to prove to the bank that no matter how much we want to continue to make mortgage payments, we absolutely cannot afford it for a reason of hardship. Hardships could be loss of employment, death in the family, divorce, and a lot of uh, unpleasant things, obviously. So it's important to keep in mind the positive thing about doing a short sale and selling your property, settling your mortgage and the debt through a short sale is that more times than none, we're able to get the bank to completely relieve you from the debt. So in other words, you are not going to get a judgment recorded against you that you still owe them whatever the balance of the debt is. As we now, stand today, May of 2021, the real estate market is on fire. So chances are that you have equity in your house. And the last thing you want to do is lose that equity. That's like having money in the bank sitting there and just waiting to be taken away by the bank. So you want to consider and give it a really good thought. Maybe it would be a better idea for you to put the house on the market, sell it, keep your equity, settle your debt, maybe move on and rent for a little while, and then buy a new house for you and your family and start fresh. But one thing you don't want, remember this, if you ignore all your options and just think that everything is just gonna go away, you will lose your equity. There's never going to be an opportunity for you to cash out on that equity. So please make sure that you explore all your options. There's nothing to be ashamed and embarrassed about. The worst thing you do is ignore the situation. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me in private or down below. The conversation is confidential. Please do everything that you possibly can to educate yourself. And I will see you in my next video.